Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and this is Chad, and we're back with another episode of the Angry Snowboarder Show. Still not canceled. Yet. Might be coming. Numbers are slipping. <laughs> it's your fault. It's all your fault. No, it's not your fault, Chad. You're just you're a fucking inanimate object that's a part of my broken psyche. Anyways, we're back. We've got a new show for you, in case you didn't know that. Also... Remember, every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we do a live stream, so you should probably tune into that, ask questions, get offended, probably tell me that I'm an asshole or something, get banned from the chat, cry, get your girlfriend to send me a horrible Instagram message telling me I'm a rude, awful person with atrocious grammar. I mean, it's written with atrocious grammar, because, you know, your girlfriend's probably a troglodyte. Anyways... Doesn't matter. We're back. We got a new show for you. We're going to dive right into this. In what some of you might actually call good news, Mount Baldy in California is reopening. (laughs) Yeah. And they claim the conditions are as good as it gets in April. Now, mind you, they're opening with 10% capacity or something like that. So don't feel like you have to rush up there because... Pretty sure someone's probably bought all the day tickets online and you can't get there. I, I don't really know. I don't know how this thing's going to operate. It's uh, it's really interesting. I mean, they closed March 20th. They're the, officially the first resort in North America to reopen for the season. So we've got that going on. And they're definitely the first resort in the United States. But uh, as they lessened the stay-at-home order in California and the reopening golf resorts and stuff and golf courses and I don't I don't know stuff where people aren't near each other but they're still whacking balls uh yeah they're gonna reopen so here's here's what their press release says we are taking the COVID-19 crisis very seriously Mount Baldy Resort is a unique all-season mountain resort and is well designed to accommodate social distancing guidelines In addition, we are implementing several policy changes that will help to ensure the safety and health of our our guests and staff. Similar to how a golf course operates, Mount Baldy will check in a maximum of four individuals at 10-minute intervals. One day, Alpine ticketed guests will have access to lift number two and number three from that time until closing. In stark contrast... To a golf course, 150 acres, Mount Baldy Resort, 800 acres, has more than four times the area and will be operating at less than 10% of occupancy under this plan. Mask or face covering, consistent with order of the health officer of the county of San Bernardino County, for the control of COVID-19, must be worn at all times. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, there's that. I, I don't know. I mean... To me, it seems kind of foolish to be opening it this early, and I suspect they're going to get a bum rush. But then again, these were the guys that when everything else was closing, they were still saying they were open. So so they're saying that they have ski and ride times that started yesterday. I'm not sure how that actually works, but or how that's going to work when people all get down to the bottom at the same time, because you know people are going to stop halfway and be out of breath and out of shape because they haven't been following Randy's workout <laughs> routine. That's right. You've got to follow that shit. Keeps you in shape. But it's interesting to say the least. But it is, well, I guess we could say it is some kind of hope for us. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't really know. I'm going to leave that up to you, the viewer, to decide. Well... We're not sure what Randy's going to do for you today, but he's probably going to do some Randy-ass shit, so let's go see what Randy's got for you. Bending down at the waist, keep your arms flat, and reach for your toes. Now, sometimes you might hear this when you're in prison in the shower. Just go with it. Don't fight it. It won't hurt as much if you don't fight it. But you want to go down there, count to ten, and then slowly roll back up from the pelvis, keeping your arms straight and hands out. And then you come back down. Remember to keep breathing from the belly as well while you do this. But that's going to help stretch out that. And just roll back up and forth. Any questions? Surprisingly, Randy actually had something of value today. Good for you, Randy. Good for you. And now for a topic that we promised we'd talk about. Season passes and if you should get a refund. Or if they will be issuing a refund, as well as those asshats that are fucking doing the goddamn lawsuits. One against Vale and one against Altera, because 
you stole my season. Well, you know what? No one was fucking prepared for a pandemic, asshole. But we'll get into that more. No. Here's here's the bigger thing. Like, I get people are upset, but there is way better places to be putting your anger right now. Mainly with this fucking administration and how stupid they are with handling this shit. As well as the dipshits that don't take it seriously. I mean, come on. The sooner we all fucking do our part, we get through this, we go back to whatever the new fucking normal is. I've been saying this for a couple weeks now. I don't need to rehash that, right, Chad? No, <laughs> <laughs> Chad even fucking agrees with me. He's just a part of my broken psyche. No, here, here's the thing. And I want to give you guys some fucking numbers here. So, we'll go, we'll start with Altera for unlimited days. Resorts with unlimited days. Winter Park was open 134, Steamboat 122, Eldora 136, Mammoth 129, Squaw 122, Crystal 108, Copper 129, Stratton 114, Solitude 108, Big Bear 108. In 108 days, if you can't go five days of snowboarding, <laughs> what the fuck? That's on you. Now let's look at Vail. Keystone opened with 155 days. They were open 155 days. Breckenridge 128. Vail 121, Beaver Creek 113, North Star 108, Stevens Pass 89, but they had a shit start up there. I get that, but that's just the price you pay for living in the Northwest. Whistler was 109, Park City 115, Heavenly 110, Kirkwood 108, Stowe 115, Big Boulder 116 days, but that's not counting the days that they closed for weather closure. Mount Snow was 124, Three Valleys was 102, and Arlberg was 108. If you can't get out your five to seven days in that time, that's what it takes to pay for the pass, you fucking blew it. There's no guarantee on the length of the season. And actually, we've been spoiled for the last few years. They keep extending the season. They started earlier and they push it later. And when I moved here to Summit County, you'd be lucky if you got a mid-November opening. Most resorts like Breckenridge, Keystone, you're talking around Thanksgiving was when they opened. And they usually closed first or second week in April. That would leave a basin. And a basin, I can remember years where they were closing middle of May. Maybe late May if you were really pushing it. And that was weekends usually. So that meant Monday through Thursday they were closed. So you had three days to ride. You people are over here bitching that you didn't get your days. The only way that I think you theoretically should get a refund is if you can prove that you had a trip booked for the spring and you were going to use it. And even then, all they should do is carry your pass forward to you for the next year. All these people are like, well, we need discounts. We need this because the pandemic fucking ruined my season. Fuck you, dude. There's way worse things. You want to talk about how you want the resort open? Okay, let's talk about the communities in those towns. There's a fucking soup kitchen serving meals in North Lake Tahoe for people. The food pantries here have more people than they've ever had going in. 30% of people last month couldn't pay their rent, and they're projecting 50% won't be able to pay May's rent. You want the resorts open? Who the fuck's going to be working there? There are way worse things. Like, I talked to a friend of mine yesterday. He had to close his business March 15th. March 15th to April 15th, he lost $70,000. He applied for an SBA loan. You want to know how much he got? $1,000. So he's down $74,000? Come on, people. Like, use your head. I put the numbers right there. So you're talking 100 plus days for most resorts that are unlimited on these passes. And you couldn't get out even one day a week? Are you fucking kidding me? That's on you. That's 100% on you. You didn't make your days count. You chose not to go out there. You want to bitch and moan about it? Move to the fucking mountains. We're going to need a lot of people to operate the ski resort next year. Why don't you come this way? Fucking do that. Seriously, this is bullshit. The two assholes that are doing the fucking lawsuits? Yeah, fuck these guys. Robert Stephen Kramer? Fuck him. Hope he gets AIDS and ass cancer. Oh, Brian Hunt? More like Brian Cunt. Fuck that guy. Fuck them both. Class action lawsuits? Dude, it's a pandemic. It's a global crisis. No one could have predicted this. This isn't like they just one day were like, well, fuck it, we're not making any money, and they just turned the lift off. No, they, you really want to be mad at someone? Be mad at the federal government for not taking this seriously sooner and getting us where we needed to be. That's why we are where we are, and we're in lockdown. Fuck. Yeah, I'd love to be snowboarding. I said that on Tuesday's show. But you know what? I'm sitting at home 
with a fucking mannequin. No offense, <laughs> Chad, you're great. <laughs> Who's a block of wood, <laughs> plastic, or whatever the fuck he is. I don't know. He's probably Elijah Wood's sex toy from Maniac. <laughs> Next to me, <laughs> making content for you people. No, fuck you people. I get you're upset. Oh, you don't understand, Averin. You got 57 days on your icon and 30-something days on your A-Basin pass. Yeah, well, I got zero days on my indie pass. You know what? I'm just going to have to eat it. That's the fact of the matter. Oh, they're going to give me 30% off next year? Cool. I'm still paying 170 so that basically means I paid 370 for a pass. So that means I have to go to those resorts more. That's if I buy that. That's if we can travel next year. Everything is fucking uncertain right now, people. Why the fuck are you doing this? I mean, we got to look at this realistically going into next season. If you go off of what I said about Mount Baldy opening at 10% occupancy, what's that going to be for the big resorts? You think they're going to just let 25,000 people roll up? From what I heard, the restrictions on hotels here when we do reopening is every other room will be rented so that those rooms in between aren't occupied. And then when they do a flip, they're going to flip the whole floor and then the unoccupied rooms would become the occupied rooms while they clean and let the other ones sit for a week. That's how they're going to be doing things. You know what that means for the chairlift? Oh yeah, longer lift lines, but you're all going to be separated six feet out unless you're in a group. Sorry, that's just how it's going to be. And it might be one of these things where you have to pre-register every day that you're going to go ride. So if I buy a season pass, does that mean every day I got to get up at five in the morning to beat the fucking hordes to the resort so I can be first in line? Probably. That's a reality, a potential reality that we might face. Worst case scenario, God, I hope we don't have to, but that's it. The amount of money that you're dumping into this lawsuit, too, why don't you go fucking donate to the communities that are affected where these resorts are that you're going? The one guy I heard was like, well, I only got out six days and I was planning to go at least four more in the spring. You're literally suing over four fucking days, dude. I was going to go clock another 70 fucking days. You don't see me suing. I'm just waiting around going, hmm, should I buy my A-Basin pass? Should I buy my Icon pass? And that's the other thing. Everyone's bitching about, well, they raised the price of the Icon Pass, but if you renew, you get 200 bucks off. But realistically, with the price raise, you're, you're not, it went up $119 or something like that, and they're bitching and moaning. Who gives a fuck? Why don't you go buy the day tickets every single day that you go ride and tell me it's going to be just as expensive? It's not. It's not. You want to bitch about that? Fuck you. Dude, there are way worse things to be bitching about right now. And these lawsuits, all they're going to do now is cause the company to be like, well, we got to fight this. We got our lawyer fees. We got this. Well, raise lift ticket prices. Oh, concessions, raise concessions, raise prices of everything. In a time when we're sitting here looking at companies wondering, are they going to even open? I don't know. They canceled fucking Oktoberfest in Munich. Oktoberfest is canceled. And that's just alcohol. And alcohol has been proven to Kill the coronavirus. I mean, people are just pickling themselves so they can't get it. And that's canceled. I'm being facetious here, people. This is where we're at on this. Like, why the fuck are you doing this? And Kevin and I are going to be talking about this in an upcoming podcast that we're recording today. So you get to look at his opinion of all this. But realistically, we're all kind of in this and together uncertain of what's going on. I mean, some of these little resorts that you love might not open. And this is another question that I've gotten. Should we buy the Mega Pass or should we buy the Little Resort Pass so we can support the resort? I don't think we're going to have a lot of international travel. I don't think we're going to have like cross-continental travel unless you're driving. I just don't see it. I, lodging's going to be different, the whole thing. You might be better off going to your little rinky-dink resort that you don't like to go to. You'd re you know, I know you'd rather come out here or California, Utah, or wherever for two weeks or whatever it is, seven, 14 days, whatever, and go there then go ride 30 days at your little resort. Well, you might be spending 30 days at your little resort. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just it. I'm debating, do I get the Icon Pass or not? I mean, the good thing about if I buy the Icon Pass here is I would get Copper, Winter Park, Steamboat, Aspen, Eldora. Those are all day trip resorts for me. When I go there, I don't spend the night. I just go down, I come back. You know, I'm not really hurting anything. Or do I just get a Copper Pass because it's right there and I can go and I get my A Basin Pass and it's right there and I can go. I don't know. I know that the 27th of May is when the renewal date is up for Icon. I haven't really followed much on Epic yet. 
And I haven't seen too much out of them, but you know they're also probably fighting that lawsuit from that dude that hung on the chairlift. So that's a whole other thing. But realistically, do we need these fucking lawsuits? No, this is just entitled privilege. Like, get over it. Seriously, you want to bitch and moan about this? I bet you next year's snowmaking's cut in half because that's one of their biggest expenses, which means later openings. You're gonna bitch because they didn't open when you wanted them to. Get over it. I can remember a year when we got the fucking dust storm from hell that came through here. Mid-March, buttermilk closed because they had red sand in the snow and it was melting it. And up at the basin, I think that was the year they closed like May, early May. I think it was like the second and then they would reopen on weekends and stuff. But the snow was melting super fast. Okay, so who do we sue over that? We don't. Oh, you going to be one of those guys that goes out 10 days but blows your knee and then bitches and moans that they won't refund you or let you transfer your pass to someone else because they could use it because you paid all this money, dude? Get over your fucking self, all of you. It's a privilege that we even get to fucking snowboard. Dude, seriously, there's people out there trying to figure out what their next meal is going to be and we're over here like, oh, we got to fucking snowboard. Fuck this. I know how privileged I am. Do you know how privileged you are? If you didn't get the days, it's on you. I, I'm just, I'm fucking done with this topic. I'm just fucking done. All right. Well, this episode is probably kind of depressing for some people, although someone probably found some humor in it. I don't know. Chad, did you find humor in it? You don't even matter anymore. I write your fucking lines anyways after I this. Who gives a shit? This has been the Angry Snowboarder Show, and I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and this is Chad. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the content we've got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you'd really like to support us, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. Seriously, your guys' funding is what keeps us going. I could tell you more here, but i got a video over there that I'll explain it a little bit better. Anyways, we'll see you guys in another video.